A lot of the foods that we ate growing up were considered health foods at the time. I was gluten sensitive, definitely sensitive to legumes. And those were two things that were really, you know, big in, in our family when I was growing up. Dairy as well. So we ate a lot of dairy, a lot of legumes and a lot of gluten. And I would feel pretty crappy after eating. That kind of led to eroding my immune system, to infections that led to more antibiotics. And then, and then as I got older, I started having like more serious infections. I got salmonella when I was in, in, in high school and then I got um, parasites later. So I think all of those things kind of combined with then the stress of, of the work life that I was experiencing was like a perfect storm that eventually my immune system just started going bonkers. When I was diagnosed, I had no idea what RA was. I didn't know there was a difference between rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. I didn't even know what autoimmune dysfunction was. I went down the conventional path of, uh, of, of Western medicine. And to a degree, I, I, was, I was very relieved to get a diagnosis because now it kind of made sense of the fact that I felt like, felt like crap all the time. The downside of it was that I also put so much trust and faith in the medical community. As they, you know, they said, listen, it's, you're going to have this disease for the rest of your life, but they're great meds. We can manage the disease. You're going to be okay, but you're going to be on these meds for the rest of your life. And there was a, a part of that that I was like, hmm, I'm not sure I'm okay with that. But then there was another part of me that was also like, well, I guess that's just the, you know, the hand I was dealt and I'm going to deal with it. And then I started to realize over the course of the next several years is that the actual meds that I was on were, were leaving me exposed to infection and they were deteriorating my health even more than just, they were basically just suppressing the, the symptoms. So I went from you know, having acute flare-ups frequently to no longer having as many acute flare-ups, but just being in a constant state of chronic inflammation and illness. That's when I realized I got to change. I mean, I can't continue to, to live my life the way I'm leading it. And that's, that's when I met Frank Lipman. Once he started working with you, I mean, it seems like you are mostly, um, diet was the biggest thing for you? Di yeah, there, there were, I mean, diet was a big thing. Par the parasites was a big thing too. Um, and, and that was probably one of the key components in, in leaky gut syndrome. So, um, uh, so clearing up the parasites, I went to see a parasitologist and went through like treatment for parasites. Um, and then changing the diet supplementation, we used actually did use some antibiotics as well, very low level antibiotics. Um, but the idea was to try to, you know, get the gut back into a healthy balance. And, um, and then from there, just, I mean, that's when exercise became really important, lifestyle changes, yoga practice, moderating my stress as best as I could. It sounds a little woo-woo, but we do know that stress is literally one of the key drivers in, in autoimmune dysfunction. And it's a very difficult thing to quantify, you know, we're all stressed. I mean, I was just driving through New York City today. That's stressful. Like there's so many things that create, uh, I think of them as like the paper cuts of life. So if you have to, sometimes you have to really take an assessment and step back and say, how can I become immune to these paper cuts or at least defend against them? Because they are slowly eroding your ability to, to uh, maintain a state of homeostasis.